after a very, very, very extended break, wouldn't you say? I would say so, but dude, keep this song going though. This song is super savage. Got you right there. You're good. It has been a minute. We have had two weeks. Holidays. We've had New Year's, Christmas, snow days, snow sick days, days, sick days, COVID days. days. I wish Bonnie Henry would fucking retire. Other days, I was glad that she didn't. Spider Man, the emotional sides of Spider Man. You're like, damn, son. Oh, you like felt it. You're like, oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's this one part I'm gonna ruin it for you guys. So like fucking spoiler alert. Spoiler three, two, one. Suck my dick. Uh, there's a part of Spider Man where he has to tell Doctor Strange to make everybody forget. Yeah. That they know him. Oh yeah, yeah that, that's like near the beginning. No, that's near the end. Forget that they. Know. Oh yeah, at the very very end. Yeah, yeah. yeah forget. Oh yeah, when Strange is telling Spider Man about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And then. He has to go and see the girl and his friend or whatever, MJ and the yeah, fucking yeah, yeah, the yeah. fat Filipino guy that's it's bald that puts on fucking toques of fucking hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think yeah. that guy has uh, alopecia. He's like, alopecia. Yeah, alopecia. Yeah, I think it does. Um. So anyway, that side, I like fucking shed a tear in my fucking nutsack, man. I was really? like, dude, this yeah, is. Yeah, it was. It was that, was. that was a tough one. When he realizes that everybody he's ever met is going to totally forget him. But yeah, man, I also like, bro, it's so savage. You have to take so much more. Like, I, I should have took four tabs. When I tell somebody that I should have took four tabs, they're like, yeah, what fuck, the yeah, fuck yeah, are you yeah, talking yeah. about? Yep. And I took two and a half and I was like, it's okay. It's okay. Yeah. But somebody took one and they were like anal fucking tripping yep every 15 seconds they're laughing and they're like oh my god oh my god <laughs> i take two and a half i'm like yo it's like 20 minutes of being high and i'm like oh, this i i have yet to try acid i don't know if i ever will go to kawaski real quick kawaski yeah that fucking night call kavinsky my guy yeah, <laughs> Kowinski. You 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 realize that that guy had like one banger. Who? Kowinski. <laughs> Kowinski. Oh my gosh! Shut your There's mouth. V. Where where's the W? Kow Kowinski. Where's the W? Kowinski. There you go. Kowinski. There you go. You got Fucking it. You got Kavinsky. it, man. You got hey, it. you're cock sucking Kowinski. This is not as good, bro. Mm. Night call is like my call. No. Bro. About to have an orgasm with this. Listen to this. Fucking banger. Banger. Watched, banger of a track. You watched the movie? Drive? Drive? Yeah. Yeah, bro. Uh, yeah. This was right when uh, this is the Ryan entrance. Gosling. This is the beginning. This is the beginning of the I know, movie. But this is right when Ryan Gosling was fucking slinging dick. This is like was, the this part. Was peak Gosling peak, years. Peak. Oh, for sure. Sling dick years. Oh, you know sure. what I mean? Oh, for sure. He had a vein on his abs that oh, one time. 100%, 100%. You know, it was like perfectly had, fucking he had, he had the toned. Whole, he had the whole thing. He was like Pete Davidson now, but he deserved it. Hey, gun to your head. Would you suck his dick for 100 grand? Yes. 100%. No questions asked. Are you fucking kidding? No, man. At least 200K. 200K. <laughs> so what's the separation between that? <laughs> is my question. Okay. Non-taxable. Non-taxable. No, 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 for real. No, okay? for real, dude. I'm going to give you I for real, for real, no bullshit, I'm right? Not, I'm, listen, I'm not, listen. No, man. Listen, dog. Listen. Just okay, give me give okay, me some okay, patience. Okay, sure, sure. Three quarter million dollars. Uh-huh. One of your friends has to be there. No. Three quarter that's, million. That's a no. And just one dick suck. What do you want? Just like one in no, out. No, one in out. Like no big deal. That's not even like if you plan this right, your your lips and your mouth never touches it. It just goes hovers above it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? For for a quick little hover, three quarters of a million dollars, non taxable for one of your friends, dude. Get one of your like dummy friends <laughs> to like be there. Get He's one, got get like go to the one of like the more forgetful motherfucker. Yeah, the guy with dementia, Doctor Evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> forgets it right there and then. You're walking with three hundred, uh, three quarter of a million. People asking questions. You're like, well, what's with the questions, man? Fuck it out. Would you do it? Three quarter of a million. It has to be like 3.5 million. Then I'd do it. 
3. And everybody can watch. I don't give a fuck. 3.5 million. 3.5 million. Listen, if I can get you an offer right now to suck dick on camera for three and a half million, you'll do it? No. What I what did I say? I said hover over it. Oh, yeah. Hover, hover. Yeah. Hover over it. Non-touch, no contact. Like mask on. He's got like a condom on and I got a mask on. What about it smells? No. It, it, has, <laughs> it has to have a mask on. I'm out. I'm out. Try to be like that. Interesting question to start off this podcast. I can't even like be sexual with a girl if I know she stinks. That was just one girl a long oh, time sure. ago, right? And we're fucking around, right? <laughs> this is like great. Uh, one year after high school, or no, summer after high school. Okay, okay. And she's riding me, right? And she's got pants on. And we're in, um, remember Barcelona? Those are, those are like a little pub pl- place called Barcelona. No. Okay, anyway. We're in this place in Barcelona and she's grinding I and mean, she's Mexican. Yeah. Right? She goes to the washroom. She comes back. Right? And I got my hand like this. Right? And then uh, something happens and I like scratch my face. Oh, right? no. And then I just smell like fish tacos, bro. Like oh, not rough. premium fish tacos. That's the rough. stuff that you'd find like by dockside where like they threw it at like a seagull and it got partially eaten, but there's still enough there where it cre- creates a scent. That's what I smelled. Oh. And I ran, bro. I ran. I ran so far away. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Fuck. Yeah, no, that, that that in itself is a deal breaker no matter how much like money is involved. Like it, it, if she's paying you? No. No, I'm saying like even because we this whole thing this whole thing started because of money. Hold You're on. Like, how much? <laughs> what if you had a sugar mama, right? She'd pay you 20 grand a week. Yeah. Every week. I can't do the smell, man. I can't do the smell. But I can't do She's it. She's disgusting. I can't. I can't do it. I physically can't do it. <laughs> my my body won't let me. No, but you don't even have to be. You, you, you just go in and out once. I can't. My body won't let me. Do you full know soft. Means? Full soft. I can't go in soft. <laughs> what if you had you hired guys? To push? <laughs> <laughs> They're just shoving <laughs> with like fucking, get in like a Pillsbury dude, fucking cook. With, with fucking poles and shit. You know how they like push. People in in fucking subways in Japan. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Just shove them in there. Jeez. There's a guy with a fucking pool stick just shoving you. T- no, no fucking way, no chance. Dude, not even. No, I don't know, man. man. I on. put in more more effort. I guess I'm hungry for success. Yeah, that, that's what <laughs> that's what success is to you. Huh? That's what I guess success I'm, is. I'm just hungrier for that extra mile. I'll yeah, go that sure. extra yeah, kilometer yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll and s- do it. I'll accept um, that. I'll accept. But that. yeah, what's new with you, man? Uh, yeah, new year, new uh fucking apartment which is nice we're gonna it's gonna be the first full year that i'm gonna spend in that apartment which is nice uh so we'll see how there's gonna be a lot of changes i think some projects i got going on in there um what do you what's the top on that list what's the top couple, there's a couple of furniture pieces i'm gonna be making with my dad like uh it's gonna be like a bookcase these aren't own. dildo related no no okay no, there's uh Well you lost my interest. <laughs> <laughs> so, sorry to disappoint. Sorry to disappoint. If you're right? gonna bring girls over and have them like fucking test drive this fucking dildo machine you got going on because you're a mechanical enduro, I'm in. But if if it's just some like L shaped couch, fuck you. <laughs> I can fuck you. I can buy that. I don't have to make a dildo machine, man. No, but it's like more fantastic, right? Like, look what your father made. Look what your father made. Your father and his father together made this machine that just has 6,000 RPMs with one AA battery. Ridiculous, man. Uh, But yeah, other than that, uh, no, not too much. It hasn't been a crazy quick start to the week, to the the year, actually. Because what what is it? January. Oh, we're like first weekend, right? No, I'm fine. Um, so yeah, work, work's picking up for sure. Second weekend. Second weekend, yes. Work's picking up now, now that everyone's kind of like come back. It feels like this time around, a lot more people that we know got the Rona. Yeah, like but a it's... a lot more, which is a good thing. You want more people to get it, as kind of fucked up as that sounds. You want more people to get it and get over it so that it doesn't bother them anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I think that, I actually think that's in a good place because the more people get it quickly, the sooner we're all like, all right, let's just chill the fuck out and get back to it. Because I think everyone's waiting for some of that shit to kind of like chill a bit. I know you. I mean, you were working at the club for a while. Mm. That shit got close. Yeah, but dude, fuck that club. You know, it's fun, but at the same time, you're, you're kind of like, it is. You go to these places, right, to have yeah. a good time, 
But you also have to understand these places are disgusting. Yeah. They're yep, also yep, very disgusting. Yep, yep, yep. You know what I mean? They're so grimy. And you could just be out of the shower. You walk in, you walk out, you feel like you need to shower again. Like it's even the highest class place is just grimy places, bro. Yep, that's yep. just how it is. Yeah, no, that's true. It's true. So yeah, man, I'm excited for the year. I, I'm keeping it like low I'm keeping my expectations low key, but I, I am excited. I do have some things not cooking, but some things on the go that if, if they happen this year I'll be very, very happy. So, some we'll NFT is gonna pan out. Hell yeah, man! It's gr- oh. Gonna make a greasy monkey. Ricky Rose. Ricky Rose. Uh, but but yeah, I have a an interesting question for you. Yeah. And you gotta change this though, please. I I, I need night call. Oh, you need night call? No, no, this isn't a night call kind of question though. Okay, but I need night call. You just need for any call. kind of question. All right, bro. You got to do, do night call here. Giving you a night call tell you how i feel oh baby don't sweet talk me like that this close to midnight or after midnight i told you man that's my world right there Synth what's wave. the question man had a user a viewer submitted question okay question was how to best get over heartbreak have you ever here's another question have you ever been heartbroken? And be honest with me, man. Oh, fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. In the worst way. Yeah. Right? And I, I want you to think, because, like, disclaimer, I have to. I think ev- most people who have ever, like, exposed themselves to, like, a, a romantic relationship, 100% have been heartbroken. And even if you yeah. haven't, even if it wasn't a, a romantic relationship, even if it's just, like, a relationship that you really that you really invested into emotionally, it could just been a, like, a, a friend, like a brother, a, whatever. You can still get heartbroken. Um, <clears throat> loss comes in many way, in, in many forms, so it doesn't always have to be romantic. But um, can you think back to the last time you were like truly heartbroken? How how much did that take out of you? You have to totally reassess everything you're doing. You're like, why did this happen? Sure. Right. What are the choices that I made? Mm-hmm. Because to me, I think initially I was ignorant to the fact that i had to like face the realities of the problems that i have within myself right that got me to this point yeah right why did it get get here right like why did it have to be like this right but once you take yourself out and you actually like sit in it Mm -hmm. like you really need to be like in a if it's like tragic yeah you have to be like in a secluded place for a very very long time almost like detained (laughs) it's i think it was like one of the better ways of dealing with it because you have to always deal with a face on you're like i'm i'm here because yeah 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 well because that's the thing when it it comes to these situations of like loss or like change there are times when it's i want to say like not like user created but it's it's something that i don't want to say you could control but that you affect it directly whether it's well it's just your choices yeah uh but then there are other situations where shit's out of your control Like whether you lose somebody like they die or whether someone has to leave or whether like something like that that you couldn't really control, but it still hurts just as much. You still have to face the, the, the fucky shitty idea that this is how it is. Yeah. And the sooner you jump into that and accept it and accept it, that's, that's like the hardest part, man. It's, it's absolutely, it's, it's crazy because if you have a big ego, Jesus right and it's like life is just forcing you into this it's like you know dealing with a bully imagine you always dealt with bullies really well you just knock them out or whatever the fuck and then but this this time you have no say Mm -hmm. for for a guy who's got like you know 60 IQ to like 90 IQ not the smartest guy like a a juice monkey type of guy that's so hard if you're like an ape bro yeah like that, you're not you're not accepting like regular shit like you know people say a, a bunch of shit you're not gonna accept all of it yeah, you know what I mean? yeah that's true so to deal with that like that it really breaks you down and it humbles you but it's also it's it's really good because that kind of mindset and that kind of ego man in the real world you can't be, do anything with it it's useless you have to be like if you have that kind of ego you have to ha- be like a lebron or somebody that yeah, that's true nobody can touch I, i've it's interesting because there there are times when 
that whole have you heard of mindfulness yeah Th those are the moments where, where mindfulness can really really help because it's not some like tool that helps things like disappear or go away or fix it it doesn't do any of that it doesn't it's not some fucking magic cure to whatever you're going through but what it can do is mentally put you in a place to like as you mentioned take things on head on yeah you have to right because if you're not in a good place mentally you won't be able to to start accepting certain things whether it's loss or whether it's a uh, uh, great change or, or whatever like you're if you're not mentally right for it it's, it's gonna break you for sure no. um, one of the main things to to focus on though is like you have you have to just look in the mirror and one people are like oh are they like afraid of this this is like you know we go to school to learn right mm -hmm. in life you almost have to risk to learn to understand yeah right and if you don't you always kind of question what if like i did this or what if i did mm -hmm. that this is this is your time to pick like you know if you don't make it now you can make it in your 30s and if you yeah, don't make it yeah, then yeah. you you have this time like there's no rush really right and you can lose it at any time too mm -hmm. how many fucking stories do we know of some guy fucking doing a line of blow and fucking yeah, going yeah, insane yeah. losing his business yeah, all that yeah, shit yeah. that's i mean like i've heard that in in, in in my community of people, a bunch, yeah, yeah, if not more than like success stories. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, it's interesting, man. I think uh, it's good to feel those things. That's like part of life. I, I was gonna say this reminds me of. It might have been one of our prison series podcasts, or it might have been just one of our other ones where we kind of just sat down and talked for a bit about life and like some of those introspective questions. But I, I, I distinctly remember you mentioning the idea of being glad that you felt those things because it helped you grow and it helped you realize that you're capable of those things. Mm. Like it kind of, cause you came from a past life of not, whether it was not needing, not wanting, or just avoiding those kind of feelings and those kind of uh, events in life where you realize it, I remember you said something like you hit like a limit in life, essentially. Yeah, like a threshold. Exactly. And in order to push past that, you need to start accepting and going through those other other things that you kind of dismissed earlier on. Yep. And so it, that that reminds me of, of, of that. Yeah, man. I think uh, it's almost better to do it younger. Yeah. Like I was reading, I'm in this literature class that I fucking hate. <laughs> and it's just like mad essays of reading fucking other essays okay. and writing about it. Right. Like summarizing mostly. Yeah, yeah, Comparison, yeah. summaries, blah, blah, blah. Reading this one about the best way to have a decentralized ego Int Ooh. is to risk the most while you're in your adolescent ages mm -hmm. so that there's a lower risk of fucking your life up. Oh, yeah. But still, then uh, but when still you go allow your, yourself to experience yeah, the most. Yeah, it's like yeah. Uh, montonomy or some shit. I, don't quote me on this. Monotony? Mm, I don't fucking know, but it's... Don't quote me on this shit. What does it mean? It just means what I just said. Risk... Having that risk oh, I understand. while you're young understand. makes you understand the world and how it works yeah 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 right you touch lava you get burnt you you know how not to touch lava again yes you know um and i think a lot of the nervous breakdowns that happen are people that don't do that like if i have a son okay mm -hmm. what would i tell him i would tell him number one try to deal with the opposite sex as soon as possible mm -hmm. and try to have a really good understanding of the opposite sex. That will bring you so much joy, understanding what's going on and how they see you. And, and going through those moments. I, I remember having a thought with somebody or like talking about this with somebody, but when people, you know, people get heartbroken, people get hurt and, and, and all these things happen. It sucks. It absolutely sucks. You know, it, it hurts and, especially the first time you go through something like that, seriously, you really do truly think it's like the end of your world. Like it, it, it it's all consuming is what it is. But once you kind of pull yourself out of that, whether it's with the help of friends or you just by yourself kind of with time, let go of that and kind of move past it. When you look back on it, 
there's a couple of different ways to look at it. Mm. One is that was stupid. I shouldn't have done that. That was a waste of time. Yeah. Hurt myself for no good reason. Blah. Like you, all these negative ideas you just throw at it. You're like mm. this is basically a waste of time. Don't do it again. Right. A lot of people go through that where they will end up becoming very, very, very uh, centered. Sorry, not, not centered is like a good word, but like they, they, they kind of retreat, right? They put up walls to protect themselves because they don't ever want to go through that shit again, right? So they, they protect themselves and, and they limit the amount of uh, the amount that they expose themselves to future people. Mm. I think that's a mistake because to be able to have been hurt that that much means that you that you cared, that you loved enough to get to that point. Yeah. And not everyone gets there. There's a lot of people in love in life that will never love that hard. Mm. And, and to get there, to experience that human emotion that not everyone can is just something that's beautiful. And mm. it does come with the possibility of, of, of real strong emotions of, of hurt and loss and, and heartbreak and all that to the point where it's like for some people it can be debilitating. But but there, there's beauty in that because mm. to get there, you have to get to a point that not everyone gets through. Yeah. Right? And so I remember talking about this with somebody. I was like, listen don't get down on the fact that you got hurt like that because that just means that you were at a high enough place to even be brought down. Mm-hmm. Yeah, man. Uh, I couldn't say it better myself. Uh, and and if you know, you know. You know yeah, what I mean? Like yeah. If you know, you know. There's a, there's a fear of relapsing heartbreaks throughout life. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I don't think that should be the case. I think the fact that you had the opportunity to have that to have that memory because people don't understand when you get really old and I've had to deal with really old guys <laughs> at a very young age, a lot of interaction with older, you know, guys that were like myself, but just grew older in that field yeah. or in that, yes, you know, whatever you want to call it. And they basically are like, man, everything, nothing is an absolute. Mm-hmm. Everything changes at, all the time. You yeah. just, yeah, you're just not aware of it. But sometimes when you just like stop and just understand how the world works, you're like, wow, this has changed. This has changed. This has changed that's, all the time. Yeah, that's a crazy Consistently. Thought. And all you really have are memories. So he's like, what makes me at peace or decentered ego mm-hmm. is to know that I have lived my whole life how I wanted to. Yeah. It was never something that I want to do that I didn't do. Right. I tried it. I might have failed, but at least I tried it. And I think a lot more people should think like that where me trying it is good enough and like what the actual outcome is going to be, let it be. Be at peace with it, Mm -hmm. you know? I I think that's a very, very healthy mindset to have and and to, to whoever asks this and, you know, to other people listening, I think that's that's about the healthiest outlook you could have on situations like that. Is to, as much as it might be kind of you know scary to try, always push yourself to, to at least expose yourself to that kind of stuff because that, yeah. that, that that's the shit that that makes us human. Without that, we're just a bunch of fucking a- literally a bunch of fucking animals. Yeah. Right. So. Absolutely. Um. Another thing is like. Society kind of labels us to to be a certain way. Like so, society kind of is like, okay, like, oh, you're a simp. Oh, you're like a sure. yeah, fuck yeah. boy. You're yeah, this, yeah. you're that. It's like, if you don't tell people this, then th- they don't understand that, okay, they're categorizing themselves. Yes. But it's like unconsciously, that's not good. No, it's terrible, man. To be like, oh, yeah, I'm like that, this. That, that, that shit, builds insecurity. That shit, uh, insecurity and it builds division yeah. is what it does. It's it's not it's not it's not conducive to like uh like a society that's together. Yeah. You know what I mean? And another thing to view is even though we're in a multicultural country, people are going to act so different because either their parents are from, you know, another country or they are or, you know, two generations before are they're affected somehow by a different culture. So like, let's say you have like someone you're seeing and on average, mm-hmm. girls are this way, in your opinion, with your experience and yes. whatnot. Yes. The kid that could be any way. Sure. But 
you're like, wow, this girl doesn't match this. Oh, I should be like worried or something. Yeah, or yeah, yeah. Some people are just, that's the way they are. You know what I mean? Very and, true. And risking a lot of things in life has kind of made me have that understanding where I'm like, I don't really care. You know what I mean? You also you also gain a lot of that exposure the more you 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 see people from different cultures. I found that helps a lot, helps out a lot. Yeah. Because you start picking up on different cues and like different uh different different ways of of acting the same but also acting very differently at the same time. It's like in different cultures certain and we actually talked about this earlier even before the podcast. It's yeah. there there are different tendencies <clears throat> kind of the way you're brought up that 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 you kind of demonstrate how you act towards somebody in situations. And for some people that might be one way. And for some people that same way means something totally different. But, yeah. if, but if you don't like expose yourself to those, to those different situations, you'll never see it. And then if all of a sudden you see it out of nowhere, you might get like surprised or like shocked and, and not knowing what to do. But if someone like yourself, for example, who's kind of exposed themselves to all those different it like situations, you you'll know what to do essentially. Yeah, man. Um, there's just a couple of good ones on the bottom right there, dude. Did oh yeah, put yeah. Those in? I did, but then our fr- Doctor Evil was like, "Ooh, I'm like whatever." Well, let's talk about those. Those sure. are some good ones. Uh, okay, let's do a second one. Okay, so yeah, the question was, well, yeah, oops, whatever. Um, what what's your general outlook of life been? Has it changed from let's say like five, ten, fifteen years ago? Or, or not. Some things I, I I still feel like I stand out uh, among my peers and in how I look, and that hasn't changed since I was very young. I just don't see a point. Like if, if you can point out something to me logically mm-hmm. and be like, "This makes sense." Yeah, you've seen it. I'm actually pretty open. I'm like, "Oh, yeah, sure." Maybe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I, like, I will say it about you. Like when you're, when, when, if someone gets the chance to actually explain something properly, and like. It makes sense. If it makes sense, yeah. like logically, yeah, and my idea is debunked, you will at least consider it. I will definitely not only consider it, but actually implement it. Yes, right. But the thing is, people have like s- these these things where they hold that like a grudge or something. I don't. I think some things have changed dramatically, mm-hmm. but some things have uh, also stayed the same because I haven't had an opportunity to like see a better version of it. Right. You know. I- do you find that you've over time like tried different things think like things that you never would so there's people that you know will go through life and, and they're very consistent in what they do mm. and and their outlook in life might still change because they'll go to different little uh, different work environments right uh they might move so they'll be exposed to like some different things and so that will kind of naturally um affect how they like their outlook on life so if they grew up in let's say Vancouver and then and then they moved to to Florida, their mm. outlook in life is gonna be a bit different because they're now like it's fucking sunny every day, baby. It's like thirty five degrees. You mm. got fucking like you got the guys with the fucking you know what I mean? Yeah, like, the V neck shirts. Yeah, yeah, and the it's, fucking it's everything, right? So like white beaters. You kinda of outlook changes soup. a bit because you go from this this kind of weather to like sunny weather and like the environment's different. So yeah, that. But you might still be the same kind of person where you're still you're still the same kind uh, you still act mostly the same in certain situations yeah um like if you're a a, a more cautious guy versus a more r- of a risk taker mm. there's some people who keep that consistent throughout their whole lives because yeah. they're they're almost interested in that consistency mm. but there are other people that need to kind of change how they do things in order to like maintain some kind of interest in their life yeah right like it, it, the consistency isn't enough for them they you do, know what it is though they do different things what is it the people that always want change mm-hmm. and interest yeah they have such a high threshold for like pain and disappointment that they constantly need a fix when you're going through that Ooh, period okay. of okay. heartbreak it's a it's negative mm-hmm. and it's a downer but nonetheless, it's a climax. Yes. Right? It's a draw it's a dramatic drop. And it's it's also actually if you th- it's if you think about it, it's a period of growth. You you stretch your bounds by going through these things because 
there'll be times where you go through that uh, level of heartbreak you never thought like yeah you, you could you could but then you do and you're like wow yeah exactly yeah. so th th that that is a period of like stretch and like growth there was this uh word porn thing i think i've already mentioned it maybe yeah it was like uh times of uh high stress or times of high growth yes yeah yeah i've seen i've seen that yeah so it's like the lobster or whatever analogy where mm -hmm he has to outgrow his shell yes and every time he's too big too big sheds, for his shell sheds it, yeah. he sheds the shell a new one and the sh the the shell is like the analogy for your threshold of life yes and it's i mean when you're high and you're talking about this shit dude the beauty of it is like you get immensely absorbed into it and it's <laughs> you're, you're just like constantly thinking about it it's very positive it's very interesting. It it's the introspection is like uh, looking within yourself, man. It's a beauty. It's an art. It, it you know you know it's also great to like find people who do this sober. That's very rare. It's harder to get it's, into. I know that's what I'm saying. Like when you find someone yeah. who does that, it's very rare, and it's like you should appreciate those people in your life. But dude, you don't even do it yourself like that. I do not with you because like you're not about that life. But I have people in my life who I do that with. It's crazy. It's crazy. <laughs> But I, I don't know, Doug. I have people in my life like we we, we that's we do that's we do those kind of talks and and those kind of things like fully sober, no need for anything. Damn, Cause, bro. Because we're at that we're at that level of like not just comfort, but the ego between us, it doesn't exist. I think when I'm sober, I'm very robotic. Yeah. I can't. I can't. Uh, I have. I, I don't. I can't get into the environment of like. I think what helps with that is like controlling pace, so if if your normal life is kind of driven by by very fast chaotic movements whether it's you know going to school going to work doing this doing that like whatever yeah. things you have going on in your life if you can't control the pace of that or you can like slow shit down and like stop it you'll never allow yourself to actually have these conversations and to have these thoughts because it just life won't allow it for mm. you so then you have to age you, then you age yourself whether it's with like weed or other kind of drugs or whatever that kind of essentially artificially slows down time for you like the pace for you yeah right because life is still going on right just because you smoke weed on. doesn't yeah. mean that like you don't know how to do shit yeah like you still gotta eventually go to work and do it's just that. i don't think it's the time thing necessarily for me i think what it is for me is uh the level of interest in that mm -hmm. you know we're talking about this i'm like and i'm sober most of my responses are like, dude, who gives a fuck? I know. The, you know? The, the, I think that's because of all that, the, the shit that's in your head. Like all the other stuff that's going on. Yeah. It, it, it essentially pushes all those other things out of your brain. It's like a... Because they're, they're stronger. They're like, hey, motherfucker, get the fuck out of the way. And then like they push all that shit out because they're like, listen, we need the space here because we got to work. Yeah, we got to be productive. You know what I'm, you know what I'm it's saying? It's already hard enough being this retarded. Exactly. Minute exactly. Uh, 35. <laughs> yeah, so, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? Um... But yeah, man. Um, do you have anything else? No, I, I think I, I want to wrap for this because I got got to bounce. I, well, that and also got a good structure for like the next one because there's there's other questions like this that we mm. can hit. And I, and I've always appreciated our our podcast for the for the ability to actually have these conversations um, with with little ego because you need that. Yeah. You 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 can't have these 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 kind of talks when you're when you're whether bunch of shit going on in your head or a bunch of pride between two guys like it just the environment won't allow it mm. and and i've always i've always appreciated these kind of podcasts these, these episodes that we've had a lot because uh we, we've always had the ability to, to kind of get down to it which is really nice dude man we're some cultured motherfuckers man i'm <laughs> telling you dog we cut hair you know what i'm saying we make jokes we clown people you know, we smoke weed sometimes, you know, and we think about life and what's going on, man. I mean, yeah. what else can I say, bro? I like your nipples this week. Thank They're you. nice and sharp. That. My mustache was on point. Dude, on point. Holy and I want to say fuck. it was naturally fluff. Naturally right? fluffed, man. That body grease. You know what I'm saying? That body heat just curved it and straightened it up. You know what I'm saying? And that fucking nostril, man. <laughs> the fucking horsepower on that the, the, dude, the horsepower on that dude the horsepower on those nostrils bro fuck it. it's like the biggest fan in the world right it, it's like it's it's better than a 
anything you can use at a <laughs> salon, so stupid. right? And it fluffed it right up. This is that's so that's the math so behind dumb. the mustache so this week, man. So dumb. Listen, this is funny but foul. We're glad to be back. We're glad to be here again with you guys. Happy New Year, Happy you New fucks. Year's. Happy Belated holidays, as Christmas. fuck. Yeah, all that all shit. That stuff. Make sure to follow us. Share to your friends. We've been uh, share to your mom, man. Yeah, actually, actually, hold each other's mom. hands and just talk about it. And uh, funny but foul podcast on Instagram. Funny but foul every everywhere else. Oh, we're out. Ricky Rose.